Hi, this is Electronics with Mr. Esterbrooks. Today we're going to be talking about series and parallel circuits. These are two very common types of circuits found in electronics, and uh, but they behave very differently in terms of um, circuit analysis and circuit theory. So I'm going to take you through um, each one and describe the similarities and differences and um, how we do our calculations to solve for voltage, current, uh, total resistance, etc. So first of all, let's review the differences. A series circuit has just one electrical pathway, right? If you take a look at the circuit, there's only one way for current to flow. Here we have the negative side of the battery. It's got to go, electrons have to flow through all three resistors. Can't go any other way. Now, a parallel circuit, on the other hand, has multiple pathways. If you picture, uh, you know, turn on the faucet here, right? and electrons start flowing out here. When they get to this branch right here, they've got an option, right? They can either flow up this way through R1 or they can keep going down this way. And again, when they get to this branch right here, they can flow either up through R2 or down this way. So you can see um, it's a lot different from a series circuit. And so the way we um, calculate total resistance in each type of circuit uh, is different. So let's go um, and start with us calculating total resistance in a series circuit. This is the easy one, all right? If you have a simple series circuit, the equation for solving for total resistance, RT, is just the sum of each resistor, R1 plus R2 plus R3, okay? And to make the calculation simple, I've got three 1K resistors, so you should be able to see, even without your calculator, RT is equal to 1K, 2K, 3K, 3 kilo ohms, which is, of course, 3,000 ohms. Now, it gets a little bit more com complicated in parallel circuits because of the fact that the current can flow in different directions. If you picture this, the easiest way to visualize this, again, if we go back to our water faucet, right? Here's, here's our electrons flowing out like water, right? Out of the negative end of the battery. They're going to flow down here through this pipe. If you think about electrical wires as a pipe with electrons flowing through, what happens when it gets to this branch? There's now two pipes, right? So current is going to flow through both of those branches. And what that means is, in a parallel circuit, there's actually less resistance when you add more branches or more loops. So if I, let's say I was going to add another loop, another branch right here, put uh, R4, another 1 kilo ohms, that would actually make the total resistance decrease because, if you picture it again, what's happening? It's another pipe for the electrons or the, you know, our analog, uh, analog to water to flow. So if there's more places for the water or the electrons to flow, then there's actually less resistance when you add more uh, parallel loops. That's sort of a conceptual way of explaining um, the formula that I'm going to give you for solving uh, for the um, total current, uh, I'm sorry, total resistance in a parallel circuit. So here it is. The total resistance in a parallel circuit is equal to the reciprocal, that means 1 over, or the inverse, of the reciprocal of each resistor's value. So that looks a little bit complicated you could if you rearrange that algebraically this might make a little bit more sense 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 that might look a little bit uh, more straightforward of an equation but it, again if you do the algebra this is the same as this okay and again that's a math mathematical way of stating that um, as you add another loop with another resistor, 
It seems like you're adding more resistance, but actually the total resistance goes down because there's more, um, you know, pipes, if you, in a sense, more conductors for the electricity to flow through. So you will get more current, and therefore less resistance total. Okay. So let's solve this one. It's actually pretty easy when they're all the same resistor. I'm going to erase this formula because it's just a rearranged version of this. And we say RT equals 1 over, and remember each of those is 1K, so it's 1 over 1,000 plus 1 over 1,000 plus 1 over 1,000. Okay? Now I'll give you a minute to solve that. Okay, so did you get the answer? Remember, 1 over 1,000 is just 0 0.001. So we have 0 0.001, right? 1 over 1,000 plus 0 0.001 plus point, whoops, 0 0.001. But remember, it's all, don't forget the reciprocal, it's all over that. So it's 1 over 0 0.003, okay? which if you do that um, math, you should get about 333 ohms. Final answer. So it should be obvious now, 333 ohms is actually a third of each of these resistors, right? Each of those resistors is 1,000. What's a third of 1,000? 333. 333 times 3 because it's actually 333.33333. But of course, we round because um, each of these resistors is probably plus or minus 5 or 10 percent. So we round to 333, drop the decimals because uh, they're not significant. Um, and you'll find that, lo and behold, the total resistance is a third of each of these resistors. So if you see a parallel circuit where each resistor um, in each loop uh, are, they're all the same, you just divide by the number of loops, right? So if it were two loops and two 1K resistors, the total resistance would be 500 ohms. If there were four, if we went back and we added this fourth one, and it was uh, also 1K, right? You got four 1K resistors in four loops, the total resistance would be one-fourth of that, or 250 ohms. Now it gets a little bit more uh, complicated or difficult, you just have to use your calculator when you have resistors of different values. You then have to go and do this formula um, and do it carefully because you don't forget you got to do the reciprocal after you do the sum of all the reciprocals.